Um, our next uh, session it will be about Seth, and it will be presented by Sebastian Han. Han. Well, I, I still haven't said anything, so don't, don't clap your hands. That let's wait for the end of the presentation. Uh, so during the next uh, 15 minutes, uh, well, we will be discussing uh, several topics: the state of the integration. The state of the integration of Ceph into OpenStack and uh, Ceph itself also. Uh, so directly jumping into Ceph. So just for those of you who are not familiar with Ceph, um, just going to briefly introduce what is Ceph, what it does. Oh, okay, that was unexpected. <laughs> okay. um, well, anyway, uh, Ceph is a, pro a project that started in 2006 uh, by Sage Wild during his his its PhD. It's um. Obviously, an open source uh, software uh, under a LGPL license, and it's written in C++. SAP is a unified storage distributed system, and it has several capabilities. Uh, the first one is the it's self-managing. So we have this um, process working along the, um, the cluster life, so uh, that we call scrub. Uh, we periodically check the consistency of the objects, and we compare hashes. Uh, from the master version to all the replicas. It's uh, self-healing as well, because as soon as something goes wrong, uh, we just replicate all the object to, uh, we calculate, uh, we just calculate the location of the, the object and then we move around. It's, uh, well, self-balancing because we, we tend to have an uniform distribution of the data. Uh, as soon as we add a new node or a new disk, everything gets just spread around the entire cluster. So quite efficient. Um, well, and the only the only thing that makes Ceph really unique is not even written there because of the well display issues. But what makes Ceph so unique is uh, the um, the feature that uh, that is called Ceph uh, Crush. Sorry, uh, Crush is uh, stands for Control Replicated uh, Replication Under Scalable Hashing, which means that we compute uh, every time a client wants to do an IO operation, we just compute the location. So everything is based on the calculation. We don't do any lookups on the hash table. And that makes the whole thing repeatable and deterministic. So that's, uh, that's one of the good points. Um, everything works with what we call a crush map. And within this crush map, we have all the information about the world infrastructure. We have all the disk and uh, all the buckets. The, where we have all the nodes, and it's, which means that it's topology aware. So you can have your data center, you can design your rack, your nodes, and uh, this is set up like this. I have this amount of nodes in this specific rack. And thanks to this, you can just um, allocate portions of your storage uh, to a dedicated amount of servers. So basically what you can do is specifying that you have one rule that points to a, diff a specific set of hardware. Uh, this could be uh, an entire rack of SSDs or either an entire rack of SATA disk. And as soon as you compute an I/O operation, the the data is just written into the either the SSD rack or the SATA rack. So let's move ahead to the general design of Ceph. So, uh, as you can see, Ceph is uh, built upon what we call the RADOS, the Reliable Autonomous uh, Distributed Object Store. So everything in Ceph is stored as an object. And uh, we just build on top layers, um, layers on top of, uh, of the RADOS object store. Everything is possible thanks to the LibRADOS. Uh, LibRADOS is just a library that has several bindings, uh, Pythons, Obviously, C++, PHP, any well, Ruby, any languages, and where you can just plug your own application. It, that's what uh, the guys from Cinefo do, for example. So there's, they just build their own application using the LibRados, and then this is how they can store objects into Ceph. The, the, the second component is called uh, Rados Gateway, and it's just a RESTful API. It's the, um, the exact same thing as Amazon S3 and uh, OpenStack Swift. It has uh, support of users, Coda, um, multi-region capabilities. It works with geo replication. And um, yeah, that's, uh, that's also compatible with DR processes and everything. No? Yeah, we have some problems with this microphone. Oh, okay. so, 
left. Just continue with this mic, okay. Yeah, it looks like it's better. Um, the second piece of CEPH is uh, what we call RBD. It stands for Rados Block Devices, and it's divided into two PCs. Uh, the first one is a kernel module, that is part of the kernel mainstream. So basically, it's just the same thing as iSCSI. You can create a virtual image disk, and then you can map it to host. So just automatically, magically, you just got a new virtual uh, disk uh, to, to your server. Uh, the second one is a QEMU driver that is compatible with both KVM and Xen. Uh, images have, have several uh, well, numerous features, like they are thin provisioned, they you know about snapshotting and cloning, so that makes the whole thing really, really efficient. You can easily boot a virtual machine and then just, if you want to just clone it, so you just do a copy and write clone and that makes the, the whole process really fast. And the, the last piece is a distributed file system, uh, a POSIX, com POSIX compliant distributed file system. It supports uh, snapshotting as well of the directories and uh, it has also um, a feature that it's, um, uh, that, that's, um, that is load balancing the load on several directories. So if the, so while the, the MDS daemon, which is the one that is responsible for the, all the metadata of your cluster, sees that uh, one of your directory is more I.O. intensive than another one, but then the cluster will allocate a specific daemon, a specific metadata daemon to work on that. This is what they call subtree partitioning. And uh, that's, that's done for the uh, wall overview of, the, of Ceph. So now let's, ju let's just jump in into the uh, state of the integration. The, the current release of OpenStack is uh, Vana. So this is what we currently have. Um, well, I truly hope that most of you are familiar with OpenStack. If you're not, uh, Nova is the compute part, so that's the one responsible for running, vir booting virtual machines and allocating resources. Glens is main mainly the image store, the, the catalog of, that stores all the images, and Cinder is the company responsible for um, the block devices. So you just create block devices and then you can attach them to virtual machines. So what we can do currently with Havana, we can uh, seamlessly boot virtual machines into Ceph. So as soon as you boot a virtual machine, it directly goes into Ceph. Then Glenn's images are also stored in Ceph, which is quite good because as soon as you want to create um, a, new, uh, a new volume, we just use the copy and write clone functionality. Uh, Cinder also supports a mechanism that is called multi-backend, when you can just reference several storage backend, um, and thanks to the crash capability of Ceph, as I said earlier, you can specify different in storage environment, different that has different sets of hardware. So for example, you could have like uh, volume SSDs and volume SATA or something else, and that's, uh, that's quite useful. Um, after this, you can also apply several QoS functionalities uh, at the at the hypervisor level, so you can really efficiently restrict all the IOS operation that goes uh, from your client to the hypervisor. Uh, something that came also with Havana is the uh, Cinder backup. It's just a new process that has to well backup volumes basically. And the really good thing with Ceph is that well we have several several ways to to do this backup. Either you, you can use the same pool, so meaning the same set of hardware, but it's not really recommended, obviously. Uh, either you can use another pool, which obviously reference another set of hardware somewhere in your data center, or you can also specify, well, the, another Ceph cluster running on another location, another data center. Uh, so, well, this is the, the main thing that you want to do for DR purposes. Uh, the, the good thing is that we use the differential functionality. So first you just do a first backup, a complete backup, and then we just do a diff on the blocks for, for the volume. So that's the, the, current, step, the current state of the, uh, of the integration. And obviously we also support live migration. So ev since it's stores, stores shared storage based, uh, we just have to migrate the workload and the disk only remains on the safe side. So as you can see, this is, well, the, the whole thing is quite efficient because uh, Ceph unifies all the, 
all the OpenStack components, and we really, we really differentiate the, the storage part from the, the application, the software part, where we have this uh, storage layer and this on top layer. So that's uh, that's a really interesting design, and I'm already nine minutes. Um, have an, however, Havana is not a perfect stack because the, 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 the feature that we wanted the most, the seamlessly booting virtual machines into Ceph, uh, is quite buggy. Hopefully, we uh, Fortunately, we have uh, a branch, so you can just uh, get all the patches and apply the branch, and you, you can do this without any um, any problems. Um, that's the ISO status, and I'm gonna jump a little bit uh, faster, I guess. This is what we would like to have for ISO. This is one of our proposal, and that's the work that we have to do until uh, ISO uh, April somewhere. Um, one of the, I don't know if we sh okay, uh, sh I have another table after this one that resume, uh, summarize everything, but um, for ISOs, what we will have to, we would like to have is just uh, as soon as you boot a virtual machine, you, and if the image is already stored in Glance, then you just do a copy and write clone. Because now, when you boot a virtual machine, the computer has to download the image, and then it has to re-import it into Ceph. This is really inefficient. Uh, but with our source, we just uh, we can just do a copy and write clone uh, of the image, and then point the link uh, to the KVM process to uh, to boot a virtual machine. Uh, something that we would like to have also is the, um, the, the, the volume migration functionality where you have several types. So one type is, for example, volume SSD or volume SATA, and then you can on the fly change your volume type. So the storage will move your volumes to the other type and then you will be charged less. Um, something that's gonna be that, that that's gonna, not gonna be into uh, high source because the project is not even incubated into OpenStack is Manila. Manila is the distributed for system as a service project, uh, but we could do this with CFFS. Um, however, the OpenStack has a terminal functionality where you can boot virtual machine, but they are not virtual machines; they are like physical host. So you can dedicate uh, hardware host to virtual to clients basically and then to attach block devices what you could simply do is just use the kernel module from RBD and map a block device on this host and that's it. Uh, the last feature that we would like to see and uh, to be honest with you when I did this talk at the OpenStack Summit I wasn't really convinced that we could uh, do this for house house but we uh, we already started to work on that and it's uh, well we, we made major progresses on this it's the ability to use the Swift API and to use the Rados object store as a backend. So it's not that we want to get rid of uh, Swift or anything. It's just that we want to continue the unification of the storage layer with OpenStack. So I believe that for uh, HiSaaS, you will be able to use the Swift API and to s do Swift API calls and then on the back side, you, you won't know about it, but that's going to be stored in Ceph, and this is a really, really cool feature. So this is where we are now. So it's more like a mid-course uh, progress table. Uh, Swift Rattles backend is already in process. Um, the dev stack Ceph also. If, if we want to have more developers involved uh, into OpenStack and Ceph, the first step is to build a dev stack environment to see how it's configured with both Ceph and OpenStack. So this is one step forward to, um, for, for the new coming developers. Uh, RBDTDT for other hypervisors. Uh, as you might know, OpenStack supports several hypervisors, um, Xen KVM, but also proprietary hypervisors like VMware and um, yeah, two minutes. Uh, VMware and uh, yeah, and Hyper-V. Uh, VMware relies mainly on ISQZ. There, there is an implementation of that exports uh, uh, RBD blocks through TGT. So we just um, you can just use this implementation and map an ISQZ target, and that's uh, under the hood. It's just an RBD block. So we could implement this thing for the VMware processes, of VMware uh, blocks. And then we could make the use of uh, VMware virtual machines running under Ceph. Uh, enable cloning backends. Uh, so ju just what I said. Cloning. Yeah, one minute left. I know. Um, that's over there. I will be sharing the slides, and I think you already got the main idea anyway. 
because I explained that. Whoa. Uh, last but not least, Firefly is coming up during this during the, during February. That's the le uh, next stable release of Ceph. That's going to be the first LTS version for long-term support. Uh, Turing will be available, um, fast and cold data. Error encoding, RED5 over distributed system. Um, whatever ZFS, Firestorm to backend. By default, as soon as you store um, an object in Ceph, it's stored as a file on a file system, but we can do uh, this with a more efficient way using backends like RockDB or LevelDB or also NVKBD from uh, Fusion IO. So we don't need um, to use a file system anymore to store files. And that's it, and you have no time to ask me questions. <laughs> uh, I'll be outside. You can come here to ask you. Yeah, I'll be outside and around if you have any questions. Uh, these are my details, so that's, uh, that's it. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much.